My name is Butch Porter, your illustrious host, and we are with Peter Burnett with Burnett Williams here in downtown Leesburg. We're in the kitchen of the Dona Manor, the home of uh, George C. Marshall. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming to see us, man. Hey, look, um, so we're at George C. Marshall's house. If I'm not mistaken, don't you have an award with that namesake on it? It's kind of a little funny story with it. Really? The town, Go ahead. The town has a George C. Marshall Award, which right. is, I'm you know, very grateful and honored to have received it. Sure. Interestingly, uh, I have received it twice. Right. And, and I'm the only person ever to have received it twice by virtue of having been nominated to get it a third time when they realized <laughs> they had given it to me twice. So, so they, didn't they create a rule where no one else they, could have it they, twice? They did. So they, you will be the only person ever the rules can change they but, can. You know, <laughs> but yes well, at the moment i'm the only one I, with two I w I'm, I'm a big fan of that like I, I went to lsu right so we're the national champions right now in college football so i'm hoping <clears throat> that no one no one plays football ever again right in that way we can always be the national champions last right? and only right <laughs> but no i heard that the other day that they had changed the rule because we couldn't take another a third term of Peter Burnett as the George C. Marshall winner. Well, and, but, and I got to do one thing that was kind of fun, which yeah. was to move George Marshall. Oh, yeah? From you mean the statue? The statue, not, from not lying his, on his back his okay. uh, oh, yeah. at, at, out in the county. Uh, it looked like a graveyard, but uh, he was in the tall grass, in so-called in storage. And oh, wow. And it was pretty clear that it was going to be a long time before he ever saw the courthouse lawn again. There was sure. a trailer there and a bunch of other stuff going on during the construction. Sure. So we convinced everybody to let us move him to your entrance, which seemed like a really good location to me. Sure. It's and a it great statue. it seems to have worked out. Yeah. It's a great statue. I, lo I love I love where it's kind of greeting everyone as they're coming into downtown Leesburg. It's fantastic. And, and having cleaned that uh, statue as it should be, sure. uh, I think I'm the last person to have shined George Marshall's shoes. You're the last person to shine his shoes. I, that's an honor all by itself. It is. I think so. I was I mean, thrilled to do it. it was, lifelong uh, military man shining his shoes is, I mean, you're not the first. Like, no. Other people did, right? You know, oh, so that's yeah. That's really cool. Um, well, uh, so you're an attorney in town. You've been an attorney in Leesburg for... 30, how long? I'm finishing my 43rd year no right way. now. No way, 43 yeah. years. That's Started in 1977. Okay. Well, um, and uh, injury attorney, right? Injury. So all we do personal is personal injury Personal law? injury work. Yep, that's it. And and what is it that, um, you know, what's new in that world? Is, is it been, has it been the same over the last 20 years or are things changing or? Well, I think that probably the, the, the most dramatic change for really for the public and any practitioner is that when I started practicing about 70 percent of all cases were settled and about 30 percent were litigated. Okay. Uh, today, 98 percent settled, 2 percent litigated. Yes. 98. 98. 98. Wow. And, uh, and that's a the, the statistic that it, it, it illustrates it here in Virginia is in, in the late 90s uh, we had about uh, 2,000 to 2,500 jury trials, okay. civil jury trials, civil jury trials, mostly gotcha. per, mostly personal injury cases, each year. Last year, less than 500. So you've seen an 80 percent plus uh, drop uh, in uh, personal injury trials, and, mm -hmm. and and people say, well, why is that? I think it's cost. Sure, uh, it's just uh, the cost of yeah. Right. It, what what many old timers will tell you that they could try a standard automobile accident case uh, in the, go over there in the morning at nine o'clock. They'd be done by three. Uh, today it's more like two to two and a half days, and that's right. expert witnesses. And the other piece of the, the big contributor to cost is most doctors now get from five to ten thousand dollars to testify for less than an hour. Wowzers! Yeah, Man, and, that's and we we had the highest. Uh, personal injury verdict in Virginia uh, in 2017, and it was down in Fairfax. Right. Uh, and it was a huge multi-million dollar verdict. Uh, it was a medical malpractice death case. We had one witness that charged us $35,000, and he testified for less than two hours. We, it cost, you know, outright cost to put that case Holy on. Shnikes. My firm and another firm spent $300,000 putting That's the case sad. on. So you needed to win or there was going to be trouble. Well, sure. Yeah, yeah no know. doubt. Yeah. I, uh, it, that's wild. I, I, I do think um, that, uh, I guess that makes sense, though, in a, in a way, right, that we would, we would move towards 
you know, a more efficient transaction cost or whatever for uh, absolutely and is, is it you think it's a good thing in, in general or it can be there's some there's some things that are a little bit strange and a lot of people don't like and that and that is the individuality of each case is lost to a certain sure. extent because guess what computer software right 70 percent of all cases in the united states today are evaluated by a computer software uh sure program it's all math it, it, it is and and sometimes they can get a little bit heavily in one direction or another, which causes folks to head towards the, the courthouse. Uh, but the cost of attorneys these days is significant yeah. on both sides. Sure, um, sure. There, we don't have independent attorneys much anymore, firms that represent multiple insurance companies. There are a few out there. Yeah. But most of the big companies now have their own insurance companies. Sure. I mean, their own, I'm They're sorry, own their, firms, their own yeah. law firm, uh, in-house. Their own in-house counsel. That's right, State Farm, Allstate, they all use their own in-house people yeah. uh, nationwide. All the big firms do that, or big companies. Well, we're in the kitchen of the George C. Marshall House, and w the reason we chose the kitchen today is because you've been working on a project called the Ampersand uh, Pantry Project. And I say Ampersand Pantry Project because if you Google Ampersand Project, there's like a band. Were you I didn't this? know that. Yeah, there's like I didn't know that. Ampersand Project is like, did Peter start a band? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> that, that would be bad now, news. Now, you are a hobbyist, though, right? You have hobbies, and music isn't one of them. The music is band. not a hobby for no. me. No, okay. No. So I've seen you got a farm. I do. Right? I do. And uh, I think you brought in some garlic for uh, for Dave today. We school. raised thoroughbred horses for a very long time, oh, wow. race horses on mm -hmm. the farm, and I was at for five or six years, I was chairman of the Virginia Racing Commission, so oh, wow. I've been very okay. involved in thoroughbred racing nationally and internationally. Uh, since I stepped away from that after my tenure on the, uh, on the racing commission, uh, we've, we've got a few relics of horses still on the farm, but I got the crazy idea of raising gourmet garlic a few years ago. It seems legit. It, and I mean, it's, it's a, it's why not? A, it, yeah, right. Why not? It's I love a, garlic. You, There's you a lot of garlic. Plant them in the fall and, uh, harvest them in, in, uh, late June, early July. And, and, uh, Apparently, the American public cannot get enough garlic. It is, really? It is, so there's yeah, a the, huge demand? Huge demand, and the, and the stuff that comes from China, people are a little bit sus suspicious about. Sure. And the mechanically raised stuff just doesn't have the strength of flavor uh, that a lot of the stuff that, that organic farmers that raise modest amounts uh, produce. And, and there's just a huge demand for it. The difference sure. in price is remarkable. What you buy at the grocery store is 4 or $5 a pound. Gourmet garlic across the board, all the websites and all the folks are twenty-six to thirty-two dollars a pound. Oh, that's all. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, Wowzers. just a small amount. But the foodies go nuts over it, and I it is a it. huge difference in flavor. No, I believe that. I believe that definitely. But uh, woodworking is that another one? I got a shop on the farm, and I, I monkey around with with wood. I uh, you know, a wood butcher might be a better way of putting it. A but wood butcher. I, ma I make some furniture and uh, and you make, other projects. You buildings. make sawdust and, and, and make a lot of sawdust, right. you know, and make a lot of not quite square and plumb buildings. That's awesome. I, I have a building on the farm that I've just almost done with right now that I call my Corona shed because okay. I've spent the entire pandemic building this equipment shed. <laughs> It's about 3,000 square feet, and it's been fun. I did it by myself, except for the roof. I have no skills in that area, but I had uh, the, the basement has been my uh, my Corona project. There so, you go. You uh, just go down there and hide, huh? Yeah, and, no, and we, weep. We, and weep <laughs> and try to try to put up things and build things. Well, look, uh, with with all those hobbies, I've always been a man without hobbies. I'm, I'm terrible at hobbies. Uh, this is my hobby, having conversations with people. Um, so with all those hobbies and all that and, and, and a successful law firm, how do you have time to... To, to do all this charity work, how does that work out? I, Loudon Cares is something you had your, I mean, were very involved in, which is an aggregate for those who aren't from Loudon, an aggregator of, you know, health and human services nonprofits in, in Loudon County. I remember this scene uh, many years ago, right around the time we first met, where um, where you were explaining to the, the 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 county board of supervisors that you know that half an employee or whatever they were putting into it. Was worth it just for the just for the well it was a, it was a hotline it was oh kind of yeah, the big, remember the yeah, hotline yeah, yeah sure of course yeah, you do sure uh, so it was that was that was their contribution was having that hotline so that you could aggregate and it saved the taxpayers a well, it took a of lot money. of pressure off of social services that's right yeah right yeah, yeah exactly and so uh, and so so now we have the ampersand project which I want to talk about so what is it that um, how's that happen do you, is it is it something where 
uh, you just are they things that you're interested in? Are they things that you feel like there's a duty that you owe to the community because of all the things you've gotten out of it? Is there uh, is it just fun for you? What is it that kind of gets you to to all that charity work? That, that's a that's a pretty easy answer. All of the above. All of it. Right. Yeah, you yeah. enjoy it. No, yeah, oh, I absolutely enjoy it. And, and I, you know, I've been blessed with a fairly high energy level, and I've been blessed with the support of this community sure. in terms of supporting my business and 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 my family has loved growing up here. My kids have gone to school in, in Loudoun County and gone on to college in Virginia and elsewhere, and uh, you know, I'm I am fortunate to have a law firm that is uh, filled with energetic employees and is well organized and has had some success such that I can find the time uh, and the resources to go do some of these other projects and, and I, I truly it's its own reward certainly this this ampersand project has been. No, so tell no me question. more about it, What's, how did it come about? I, wasn't there, wasn't there a um like a little like a little kiosk but in front of the church is that how it started or was it yes else? I, you know i got i got reading about the uh, uh migration of little free libraries that you are all over That's the country exactly what i was thinking because yeah. i had one yeah. like right down the road from my house and i was like little free library is that a, but no there's food in it so it's like a little free library for food well what happened was that there, i guess there's maybe ten thousand or more of the little free libraries and yeah. folks got the idea that particularly in economically pressured neighborhoods where there's significant food insecurity, sure. having the ability of people to drop off non-perishable food mm -hmm. that will stay in a, in a cabinet like that without mm -hmm. weather and other temperature problems, sure. uh, and have people to be able to pick it up in an emergent circumstance, take what they need and leave what they can, sure. uh, that, uh, that might be a good idea. So they started being out and about and I started thinking about it, it seemed like a neat idea. And I went down to the shop, and started taking some scrap and, and making a little little uh, cabinet. And then I started, I talked to the town and we were eyeballing various locations. And I, okay. of course, wanted to find out about permitting for both from a structure standpoint and permitting. with the health department. I want to make sure I wouldn't violate any health sure, department sure, rules. Sure, sure. And they all gave me just a huge green light. Sure. Uh, they were a little resistant to the location being uh, on the police station property at Plaza Street. There's a little free library in the corner, which I didn't know when I first oh, went to the town. There? Yeah, oh, wow. okay. right there next to the old Loudon House, right on that corner. Right. And so I, uh, they, they pointed out that the rock program and other things that they do uh, with kids and, and in the neighborhood, when it is hosted at the police station, there is significantly less attendance. And I, I think it probably is justified or unjustified concerns about ICE matters or criminal sure, records sure, or, sure, or yeah. just fear of the police, whatever it is. Um, and so I thought, okay, if that's going to be cause people to resist getting what they need, you know, uh, let me look at other locations. Yeah, we'll look somewhere else. Crossroads Baptist Church. Which is owns, right around the corner. Right? It is, and it yeah, owns that very... big lot. I mean, that lot runs from yeah. almost Catoctin, Plaza Street, uh, you know, down to almost to Heritage uh, Street or Heritage Way, not quite. And so it's a big piece of ground, and I went and talked to the church, and I found out that they do all the Tree of Life stuff out of right, Percival. Right. Yep. So of course they're Good big people. on pantries oh, the and of food, people. and yeah, yeah, just great folks. And delivered some food for them over the yeah. So they welcomed the idea and told me where they wanted it, and and I put it in, uh, and we started in January, uh, and we had a, folks at my firm and other folks that heard about it uh, offering it what I call take a day, and they would take one or two days a month and sure. go down there and put things in. And we're learning how things, what was popular and what wasn't and all the rest. And then here comes COVID. Right. And I said, you know, maybe we could do a little more than this. And the schools, I was worried, frankly, about uh, kids more than anything. Kids because, who weren't getting their meals at school. Right. Well, they, and, they and are, the school was trying to, opening, well, right? yeah, they're doing some different things. Yeah. But what about preschool kids? And what about backpack stuff on the weekends when, sure. you know, they give kids stuff at school to take That's home right. for the weekend. That's so right. Backpack it club. seemed like the distribution could be a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking that my friends in the restaurant business here in town uh, are the ones I know are generous minded folks. Oh yeah, all and, of them are. And, and they were all stressed with this situation. I thought, well, maybe we could kill two birds with one stone. We could sure. get folks to donate some money. Uh, we could provide that money to the uh, restaurants who sure. could uh, uh, take that money and give us a bit of a discount yeah, on yeah, the food, but still have money that would not only pay the food costs, 
but a little something towards staying in business. You know, not full well, profit, sure. but and yeah. maybe not even profit, but enough to kind of meet the overhead to keep going. And uh, that model seemed to work fairly well. Sure. And uh, so we, I went around trying to figure out then where am I going to distribute this and how. And I was under the mistaken impression that the Rotary uh, folks had a food truck because I remember Judge Horn passing hamburgers out that's of it right. at August court days. We're and just I, talking I don't about know, that where they get we, that yeah. thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, really cool. And as I'm thinking about that, I just happen to be have it in my head as I'm riding up East Market Street and I and I own the building that we work out of, which sure. used to be a tasty freeze, and then it was McLean Bank, which is where the drive through right. window came from. Oh, and it yeah, was a right. vet center and then it was Baldino's right there across from the McDonalds. Baldino's is the latest, that's right. That's, that's what right. I remember. That's yeah. right. Baldino's. And and it and it has a drive through to it. So uh, you know uh, chisel and sledgehammer and, and a little bit of work and I had little a hole underneath skills. the yeah. uh, under the window where the drawer used to be and right. crafted a little ramp that went out to the second lane to keep social distancing sure. and came up with some different ways of handling the food and one thing or another and made sure everything was taken care of in a, in a commercial kitchen and properly wrapped and all that. So each we just started in and I... And this was April? April 16th was okay. our first day. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was under this impression that oh, you know, we'll have about a car every two to three minutes. Yeah, you figured have, have yeah, I you know, forty, fifty dozen a day. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep, and I thought maybe fifty, maybe seventy-five. And so uh, the first day, I think we did uh, twenty-five lunches in two hours. And the second day, we did fifty lunches in under an hour, and then it was off to the races. And yeah. uh, we and just you're kept up to going 35, up. Thirty-five thousand now. 36,000 as 36, of yesterday, 000. and we're doing about, today we did 350. Okay. Uh, wow. And we typically do, depending on the day, high 200s up to about 350. Once in a while we'll make a mistake, and, or somebody will donate some food one day, we did 400. Sure. Uh, and what we do is take about 80 or 100 lunches every day over to the site where we started. Right. And we added a table to the side of that cabinet and hand out both diapers, which we've handed out 100, 125,000 diapers so far. Um, we do uh, packages of those of about sure. uh, 10 per package and right. they just, they're very popular. I believe it. And, and so uh, we hand those things out at the, at the site over there at the same time that we're handing out lunches at uh, Market Street. So we have two locations where they're going out and that to and usually it's about two thirds to three quarters at Market Street and about a quarter to a third over there at yeah, Ferry yeah. Road. So you have, um, but there's more of those of those little kiosks, right? Little free library type things, right? Or is it just? It's just well, we we're looking to open another one when the time comes for us to transition away from the Market Street site because okay. it, we're, you know, just because COVID goes away doesn't mean hunger insecurity is going to go away. And, yes, and, that's or absolutely Food true. insecurity, I should call it. Yeah. Uh, and so. We're looking to do a little bit of a different model. It's t what this has taught us is one is how the cabinets themselves can be abused. Sure. Uh, and if, if, you, if you. you leave certain things in there, people won't take just what they need. They'll take more than what they need, which deprives others in the neighborhood of, of getting it. So uh, our thinking is that from our experience with having these tables is that we can do a couple things. One, we've had a, a wonderful wonderful outpouring of support of people that want to volunteer, not to mention give sure. us money. Yeah, my son was there. And yeah, wife your wife was too. Weekend, and and yeah. your son was enormously helpful in packing those actual boxes of, mm -hmm. of a variety of food that would go into the cabinet each day. Sure, sure. Uh, and so... Yeah. He can be useful occasionally. Oh, he was very useful, and, and I, I assured him I was going to tell you that. Uh, <laughs> On camera for all the world to <laughs> That's it. But, but we, we're... Uh, at, what we think is a little bit different is we're inviting members of the communities that we're sure. serving, the neighborhoods we're serving, sure. to come help us hand it out because yeah, they know not? each other best. They know who the abusers are. They know who. Right, we, right, right. We had right. a lady sew sixty masks by hand, cleverly put a put them in a bucket underneath and tie it with a zip tie up underneath the cabinet so the rain wouldn't get in it and it wouldn't take space from Brilliant. the cabinet itself. And yeah, said, awesome. you know, take one as needed. Sure. Well, a lady came over and took them all. And the next day, she was selling them in the neighborhood. She was selling know? them in so, the neighborhood, right. So, but if we had done my table method, it would be, you need a mask? Oh, here's one. Absolutely. So tell me, uh, tell me about some of the 
conversations you've had? Like, what are, what are some of the, the people you, I mean, give me a story, give me some ideas. Of well, some we, I mean, they've come in, in a lot of different flavors, number sure, one. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you'll see some cars, you go, why is that person coming through yeah, here yeah, in that it. car? And if you ask, the answer almost uniformly is, I bought this car when I had a job. Sure. And they qualified for that car, and yeah, they and have the car don't. payment that goes with us, as many people do. And, uh, and we've got we've got a guy that, for example, is an airline pilot, but he has flown one flight in the last five months. Oh wow! And and so he's got his car payment to make. He's got his house payment to make. Sure. Whether he's getting unemployment and the then six hundred dollars a week that is expired. That doesn't quite get to a pilot's level of income. So what are the discretionary items? Food, and maybe travel, sure. and clothes. And so food's a big deal. When you yeah, stop, yeah. figure out what stuff costs, and we've got, we, now we've added, uh, through our, the graces of hunger relief and, and uh, Chuck Kuhn, mm -hmm. uh, we've really two to three days a week have a high volume of fresh vegetables that we oh, give out great. as people come through. Oh yeah, and Mobile Hope comes on Wednesdays and they have a, they make a lane that the folks, after they pick up their lunch, they come through. One side's perishable, one's non-perishable, okay. and all of these uh, young, energetic volunteers just load it right into the cars for them. And so that's, Wednesday's a very popular day. Okay, I got Very gotcha. popular day. So what is it that's probably surprise you the most about it I would, other than the you know mercedes coming to get a free lunch but. yeah it's not quite mercedes but uh <laughs> it, it uh no, it, it. is the the remarkable gratefulness of the people coming through and you know we i and others were worried that you know it would be uh those the haves you know letting the not haves eat cake type of attitude that we were didn't want to have happen. We wanted no. it to be neighbors helping neighbors. Sure, sure. Uh, and that's what spawned my idea to give out uh, a fresh carnation to each person as they come through. And you want to talk about lighting folks up, and including the kids. That was it. The kids love those oh, flowers. Oh, sure, sure. No, and a carnation. I have a four-year-old daughter. I, mean, I, I can believe that. Right. And, and a carnation, not only are they lots of different colors, they last a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. So you can have in the kitchen, a pick a pick a jar and put it in there, and over the course of a week or two, you've got quite a little bouquet. We've got a a, a father of four daughters who is uh, divorced from his wife, but has visitation with his daughters. He collects one each day, and on Sunday when he goes to see his daughters, he takes them a bouquet of flowers. Oh my gosh! And that makes him feel very good because he can't afford to go buy them. Sure. Uh, and so the 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 genuine gracefulness and repeated uh, uh, voices of appreciation and the bless yous that come out of those cars is just incredible. It, it just really makes a difference to them. Yeah, no doubt. So um, is there, where, where, is it, where does it go? Like, where <laughs> does it mean? Because I know that originally, if I'm not mistaken, the plan was it was going to last a few months and then like in May it was going to it was going yeah, to be like April, May, and maybe a little June. Yeah, and we're well, pushing maybe, September. Yeah, I, it, what it's done is proved how wrong I've been every step of the way on this. Uh, you know, with the exception wrong, of people wanting. You're married, right? I mean, uh, being wrong is like a part of part that, of the. That's yes, the way it works. The way. No, yes, that's yes, the, yes, our yes, lot in life. You, you, you were right, honey, and I'm sorry. Right. Is that how that works? Um, well, being wrong is a part of. I mean, that's the. You know, this is a good kind of wrong. Though, right? Yes. You know, uh, you I, that, I mean, uh, I wish that this this pandemic were not. So persistent, but I guess it's a bad kind of wrong in that sense. Right? In that the sense, fact that there's still a need for that kind of. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, the one, the the another wrong that I was is is on my ability to raise money from the community. I had no idea that this community would be as generous as it has been, and it, it's across the board. It's from folks putting just a few dollars into that box in the, in the back of the building. There's a donation box right there, and people sure. will just put a couple dollars in to some businesses stepping up in the thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're online to get a grant from the town of the CARES Act money and sure. so that we can keep going. And while it's exhausting... Because uh, you're I, the chief bottle washer. And yeah, the, uh, I've the got event. a tremendous team of volunteers oh, who yeah. are just sure. terrific. Uh, it's a lot of work. But I, and I spend a lot of time every day writing checks to the various this's and that's to make sure it all comes together. But um, 
you know, having the resources to be able to keep it going uh, I, in the face of this pandemic continuing is just terrific. And we're hoping we're going to be able to go through September. Okay. Uh, and we're hoping that by early October that a lot of folks will be back to work. Now, that might be wishful thinking, as Gosh, most of my so. thinking up until now has been. I mean, initially I thought six weeks, we'll get it. Um, then it was uh, maybe 10 weeks. And now we've been going over 125 or six days sure. without let up, and it looks like the unemployment is continuing. Uh, yeah, we'll it's, see. It's a, it's a real, yeah, this, this is going to be here for a while, at least in some shape or form. I do, I hope, I do hope that it improves enough where, where it's not as, as active. Uh, you know, um, the, the name of this uh, podcast is Rules of the Game. So uh, I don't know if you knew this, but there's a, there's a very, very classic rule um, that's uh, it's kind of a sci-fi thing, but it's also something that most people are familiar with. And it's called Tan Staffel. You ever heard of Tan Staffel no, before? Okay. No. Tan Staffel is there ain't no such thing as a free lunch, mm -hmm. right? That's a mm -hmm. that's a rule. It's been mm -hmm. around. It's a it's a uh, I can't remember whether it's uh, Heinlein or Vonnegut or Harry Harrison or one of those, but it's a it's it's a rule. There's no such thing as a free lunch, um, and we hear that a lot, right? So. Um, obviously that's not necessarily true anymore. So that's, that's a rule that you guys are, are breaking. At some level, depending on how you want to interpret that. So you don't bit. think it's free? Well, I, you know, I think it, it says free lunches. It, yeah. I mean, yeah, yes. From a pure monetary standpoint sure. to the people that are receiving it, so what, here it is. No questions what asked. What does it cost them then? Right. Why well, is it not free? I think we have a lot of proud neighbors that don't like being put in the position of having to take a free lunch uh, for their kids. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that we, there are hardworking, motivated folks that, uh, you know, that airline pilot, he's not used to coming through there getting no, no, a free no, lunch. No, no. And we've yeah. got some people that are in the real estate business or in other kinds of businesses uh, that are just squeezing them very hard. We've got some elderly people that have some uh, real issues with being going into the grocery store, for example, or being sure. stuck at home and scared to death to go out because of the pandemic. And, they, and we've got grandparents that are taking food to their grandchildren who are in a situation where the parents can't, can't provide it. Uh, but uh, everybody would prefer not to be in a position to need to do it. So from oh, that absolutely. perspective, that's a price they pay. That's right. I, um, although, Let's assume for a second that there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. It's, sure. it's no longer a, a rule that can't be invalidated. Everybody that comes on the program has to come up with a rule though, right? So you have to give me one rule. It could be a rule of life or a rule that you follow, a rule that, uh, you know, of uh, whatever it is, any kind of rule we've had. Uh, I should have brought you uh, the t-shirt we give to our volunteers okay. that has an ampersand in the middle of the symbol that's on sure. it. Uh, and it has f what I, uh, you could call them rules, but I call okay. them five suggestions for a happier life. No, I like and, it. And I it's like got it. the ampersand in the middle. I've got a mag. We might uh, have to uh, pick one of them, but that's okay. Well, yeah, and I'll let you pick. I'll give them to there you quick. You, you tell me which one you think makes the most sense. We'll you know, so uh, it's, <clears throat> I call it five suggestions for a happier life, okay? I like it. It's and, very and, non and so the, the first one on there, and it's in three languages, the three most spoken languages in the United States, okay. which are English. Spanish. Do you want to guess the third one? The third one is, um, I should know this. Uh, no, it's not that easy to guess, but it's Chinese. Chinese. Okay. Well, that makes yeah. sense. I guess. Uh, I guess it does. Uh, it caught me by surprise. But so the first rule is practice kindness, okay. which I, is not be kind. It's actually practice it, practice is my view. Practice kindness. Yeah. yeah. And so it's so do it, you know. Uh, and then okay. the, the, the second one is go first. And that one it usually catches everybody by surprise. And it's like, what do you mean by that? Um, and go first. go first in terms of leadership, go first okay. in terms of taking a chance, if you will, go first in saying you're sorry, go first in saying I love you. Right, you know, sure. there's just, you don't have to wait for the other guy to make it okay. Um, okay. And, and the other is, which I, I think is a big deal for all of us, is avoid regret. Ooh, nice. And, and that's yeah. just a little bit of thinking ahead. That's a little sure. bit of, gee, if I do this, am I going to regret this later? There's a, there's a few people that have been in handcuffs and have been in front of a judge mm -hmm. that probably can relate to that. But there are lots of other milder sure. forms of it, uh, other ways that it works. Um, and, and then the next one is 
uh, be grateful. Uh, if you stop and think about it, any of us stop and think about it, we have a lot to be grateful for. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah the, you know, I, I'm grateful that with all this gray hair and my age, I can still sit up and talk to you and understand what you're saying. You know, uh, that, that's a lucky situation. In many countries or many years past, generations past, gone. You don't live as long as we're living. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And then the last one is enjoy today. You know, enjoy we, today. We can yeah. get very much into not this. Not seize the day. Enjoy today. Uh, yeah. Like it. it's, it's, you know, look, it's not coming again. It, uh, it's tomorrow will be tomorrow, yesterday was yesterday, and it, today is what it is. Make the best of it, enjoy it. There's, there's, usually if you look, you'll find something you can enjoy for today. So those are the five rules that's you awesome. pick. That's awesome. I'm going with avoid regret, I really like that one. That's it's, a really, that's a, that, that has a lot of, there's a lot in that, right? I agree. My, sec, my second choice would be the go first. That's really, because that, I don't understand it until you explain it. Well, I'm feeling poorly that I didn't bring you the T-shirt, but okay. I will get you one I, I, along with a refrigerator magnet. I won't demand the T-shirt, but I am going to ask <laughs> I'll one. get you one, yeah. I really enjoyed chatting with you. I hope you enjoyed it, too. Um, and we will uh, we'll, we'll get together again. We'll talk Love about other it. things. Great. So Thank thanks you for, for having listening. me. No, no, we, it, it's, it's, it's our pleasure. Uh, but thanks for listening and watching uh, Rules of the Game. So go uh, have a conversation.